This is Bishop Oliver T. McCray Jr., Senior Pastor of the Morris Chapel Baptist Church, located at 530 Baptist Avenue in the city of Greenwood, South Carolina. Join me every Monday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. for the Shift This Place broadcast here on Rejoice 1090 AM. We're looking forward to hearing from you. This is a place where the place will be shifted. Let's make a difference. Bless you in Radio Land. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I think this is the fourth day of April 2016 and the year of our Lord. And I thank God for another opportunity of sharing. Amen. We came to magnify his name here on the Shift This Place broadcast with yours truly. Bishop Oliver T. McCray, Jr., and Senior Pastor of the Mars Chapel Baptist Church. We're located at 530 Baptist Avenue in the city of Greenwood, South Carolina. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you are here tuning in today. We're here live in studio at Rejoice1090.com, uh, Rejoice1090 AM here on Montague Avenue in the Emerald City of Greenwood, South Carolina. We thank God all that God is doing. Amen. We praise God for all of those who uh, are listening in on this broadcast and we're still praying for all our pastors and uh, all of our elders and all those persons who are part of this great media outlet, amen, uh, tool of evangelism uh, for the city of Greenwood and surrounding areas. Amen. This uh, is the voice of the city. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God for uh, Rejoice Tonight being the voice of the city to get the word out that Jesus Christ still lives. Amen. So excited this week because this is the week that we celebrate uh, our anniversary. Amen. Two years here in Greenwood, South Carolina. My wife, Tamara, and I, amen, at the Marsh Chapel Church. And we're having a couple of celebration services starting on tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Just two nights this week of celebration. If you're not busy, come on out and be with us tomorrow night. We've got the Bishop Emmanuel Spearman. Bishop Spearman will be with us tomorrow night preaching at 6 p.m. at the Morris Chapel Baptist Church. Him and his choir and all of his people are going to be fellowshipping with us for our second anniversary. And then on Wednesday night, my good friend and brother, my, one of my spiritual sons, I call him, uh, Reverend Pastor Dr. Eric Morton will be with us, amen, on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. with his choir and his church, amen. They will be there to fellowship with us. And then Sunday morning, we're going to have like an Overseer's Day, Pastor's Day, and yours truly will be preaching on Sunday morning, amen, at 1030 a.m. So come on out. If you can't, come on out and uh, be with us. Pray for us. Please intercede for us that we will continue being the man uh, and woman of God that God has called us to be. My wife and I uh, just love Greenwood and we like what God is doing here in the city and we thank God for the favor that God has given us when it comes to relationships with people and even our government and uh, we just thank God for that. We continue to pray and intercede one for another. Amen. also want to uh, remember our sick and shut-in, all of our sick and shut-in that are out there in the radio land. I want to thank God and give a shout out to uh, Reverend Pastor Jackie Aiken and the uh, prayer ministry that she has here at uh, Rejoice 1090. We want to continue to pray for her and uh, continue to support her prayer. Amen. And, 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 and the great things that she's doing with the ministry of prayer. Amen. It's a powerful thing to have a tool of prayer, have people praying for you around the clock. And we just thank God uh, for Pastor Aiken and, and the work that she's doing. Also, want to thank God for all of the members of the Mars Chapel Baptist Church, all the great work uh, that you're doing, and thank you so much, amen, for how you're supporting, amen, not only the church, but the community with your love gifts and with your time and with your talents and with your treasure. Thank God for the Mars Chapel Baptist Church, amen. What a time we had on yesterday, and I was preaching yesterday from Second Samuel chapter 6, amen. We talked yesterday uh, uh, from uh, this story about David, when David had recaptured the Ark of the Covenant uh, and brought it back into Zion. And we know that the Ark of the Covenant was this um, rectangular box that uh, Moses had 
uh, constructed, amen, where they would carry the uh, tablets of the law that Moses got off of Sinai. They would take these, he took the tablets and they would put them in this golden box. This box was made of acacia wood and acacia wood is a special wood in Israel uh, that was uh, unperishable. It could not be uh, eaten by in insects. It was a special type of wood that water could not even penetrate. It was a waterproof type of wood and they made the temple out of this acacia wood and they took the same wood and uh, they made this uh, Ark of the Covenant or this rectangular box that they would carry these tablets in, the tablets that Moses got off of Mount Sinai. And also inside of the Ark of the Covenant was uh, Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod that had budded, amen, that God was showing, amen, how growth will uh, happen in spite of what's going on, amen, and how Aaron's rod budded, amen, how it continued to bring life in spite of what was happening in Israel. So we not only that, but we also had the manna, a pot of manna. Uh, was inside of the Ark of the Covenants. Amen. The pot of manna was that uh, bread that uh, God fed the children of Israel in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt. So these are the things, these are the items that uh, had significance inside of the Ark of the Covenant box. And on top of the Ark, Ark of the Covenant box were these two angels. They call them cherubims. And they had these cherubims that were sitting on top. They were golden images of angels and they had their wings spread covering their faces, amen, and it talked about uh, how the angels were covering those things that were in the box of covering, that the angels worked as a covering, a type of covering, a type of shadow and uh, uh, covering for Israel, amen. So we have these cherubims that are covering, and they call that the mercy seat. So we have uh, the, the, the cherubims that are covering the Ark of the Covenant. We have the bowl of manna. Amen. That represents the provision of God. Amen. We have Aaron's uh, bud that represents the priestliness of God. And then we have the laws of the uh, tablets of the laws that represent the prophetic uh, of God's word, the prophetic word of God or the prophetic doctrine of God. We have these things inside of the rectangular box or and they call this box the ark. They call it the Ark of God or the Ark of the Covenant. The covenant is a promise or a contract, amen, that Israel had with God, that God had with Israel, amen. It was a contract. It was a type of uh, a binding agreement mm -hmm, that they would have. And, you know, covenants uh, are, are what we have that we, we bind ourselves to certain things when we sign our name to covenants or promises, amen. God has made a covenant with his people. That if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. God has said, uh, if you're born again, that you can have eternal life. If you trust me, uh, I'll prepare a mansion for you. Amen. So we have made covenants with God. God has made covenants with us. And we have covenants in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament is a covenant. And then we have a New Testament or a new covenant that we have in grace with Jesus Christ. The Old Covenant was with the law. Amen. And the New Covenant is with the law of grace or through Jesus Christ our Lord. The law was for the Gentiles and grace is for everybody. Amen. I mean, the law was for the Israelites. Excuse me, but the, 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 the new law, the new covenant is for the Gentiles and for anyone that will come before the Lord to give their life to him. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will, who else, whosoever will, let him come. And here in the second chapter of Samuel, the priest, the priest, second Samuel, we find that David has recaptured the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you recaptured it, uh, it means that it was in somebody else's possession. And let's talk about that because we have to go all the way back to, I believe, it's first Samuel, amen, chapter five, where we find out that the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant from the Israelites. They had defeated Israel and they had killed 30,000 of Israel's uh, warriors on the battlefield. The Philistines won that battle. And when they won that battle, they recaptured, they captured the Ark of the Covenant. And what the Philistines did with the Ark of the Covenant, they, they were not believers in God. They were pagans. They were people that had their own gods that they worshiped. As a matter of fact, they worshiped the god Dagon. 
and Dagon was a, a type of a god that they had uh, 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 made up. And God, this Dagon god was a fertility god, but he was half man from his torso to his head, and from his belly to his feet, he was a half fish. So he was like a mermaid man. And they called him Dagon. Dagon was the fertility god. He was a god that they had made. Uh huh. And they made the statue of Dagon. And they put it in their temple where they went to worship Dagon. And that's what the Philistines worshipped. This was their god. They didn't believe in God Jehovah. They didn't believe in God of our salvation. They didn't believe in the Alpha and the Omega. They didn't believe in the beginning and the end. The creator of all things. No, mm -mm, they were pagans. So they started their own religion. They started their own church. Come on here now. And they uh, and then they started worshiping. They put the statue of Dagon inside of their type of temple. And they would go in. The people of Ashdod would go in and they would worship this particular God. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that when the Philistines, amen, captured the Ark of the Covenant uh, and they brought it in from Ebenezer into a place called Ashdod. And Ashdod was a part of Philistine. And they brought it in there. And when they got to Ashdod, they put the Ark of the Covenant beside this God Dagon. Mm -hmm. So you got the true and living God that is in the same presence of uh, of this pagan god, Dagon. And you know God says in his word, I'll have no other gods before me. Uh-huh. Amen. There's no comparison. You can't take something that God made and then make it into something that is greater than God. Ah, uh, come on now. Amen. They took something that was God made. God made the fish and God made man. And now they have put these two things together and called it a God and they're worshiping this thing. And now they have taken the Ark of the Covenant that represents the presence of God. And they've taken that from Israel and they placed it inside the temple where Dagon is. Now we want you to know something here, Radio Land. This is a terrible thing. Amen. When you put the power of God into people's hands who don't know God. It's a terrible thing when you take a God's presence uh, and you put it into the hands of people who have an evil mentality, who have an evil obstruction of justice, have an evil mentality, and don't worship him in spirit and in truth. So what they did was they took this box, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, they took the manna, a manna, they took the manna, they took the Aaron's bud and they, uh, Aaron's rod, and, and they also took uh, the tablets uh, or the word of God uh, from Mount Sinai that was all carried inside this rectangular box uh, and they set the presence of God beside Dagon. Oh my God, help me Jesus. Uh, and the Bible says, if you go on down and read the story, you all know it, you Bible scholars out there, you know that when the people of Ashdod came in the next morning uh, after they had placed this box of the Ark of the Covenant beside Dagon, uh, they found that the statue of Dagon had fallen on his face. Mm -hmm. It had fallen from the place where it was erected. It had fallen from the place of uh, where it was standing, uh huh, and the people of Ashdod came in and did not know how uh, Dagon had fallen on its face. Ah, and we know something that in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, uh, that when a man, a uh, woman, or people would fall on their face, it showed a worship or a submissiveness uh, to the God that they worship. Even today, me myself personally, in my prayer time, I go in my prayer room and I lay Nadine on my face. I have my Bible in there and my scriptures in there. It's like my war room. Amen. And I go in there and I lay on my face. Got me a little blanket in there. Amen. That my mother made years ago. And I, I'm still laying on that blanket every day, three, four times a day, giving God praise. That's where my prayer time is. That's where I submit to God totally. That's where he works on me. That's where he molds my heart and molds my soul and molds my spirit. That's where he gets rid of the fallow ground. That's where he chips away the flesh. That's where he gets rid of my attitude and gets rid of anything in me that's not like him. And that's where he makes me and shapes me and molds me. My war room is a place, amen, where the Lord has got me on a potter's wheel, amen. It's not only a prayer room, but it's a potter's wheel room where God actually takes you and molds you into what he wants you to be. And let me tell you something, molding is not a one-day process. You just don't get molded when you get saved, no. As a matter of fact, when you get saved, the molding process begins. It means you will be molded and made for the 
the rest of your days. And all of us right now are being molded and made. Everybody on in radio land that can hear my voice, uh, God is molding you in some area of your life. He's molding you in a place where you're weak. He's molding you in a place uh, that you need growth. He's molding you in a place where you need to draw closer to him. Mm -hmm. Because none of us are perfect and all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all of us need some 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 growth in some so certain areas of our life, and we all have to admit something that no one uh, makes an A in every area of your life. Some people are making D's in some areas, some people are making F's in some areas, uh, and some of us are making A pluses in some areas. But some areas uh, we're not making good grades, and those are the areas that we have to be examined. Those are the areas that God has to examine you and take you through the same test uh, until you make a passing grade. Ah, hey, and, and now we see where they have brought this God, amen, inside of uh, Ashdod's temple, and now they found, the people of Ashdod has found their God, Dagon, this half man, half fish, uh, they found him on his face, uh, amen, to signify that he's worshiping uh, the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So no, they, they walked in, they walked in, they did, and now the people of Ashdod said, oh, this must be a mistake, and something's happened, and maybe he just accidentally failed, and they put him up again, they erected him back, uh, and they put him back in his place on his throne uh, and they said let's try this again so they went back amen home and they came back the next morning uh, and this time Ashdod was back on his face again uh, but this time when they came the second time uh, his hands had been removed uh, amen from the statue and his head had been cut off uh, from the statue and the only thing that was laying down on his belly was his torso uh, oh come on here now and now we see now the Ashdod people walked in there the Ashdod people walked in uh, and they said something's not right. Something's going on, and they refuse uh, to go back into the temple. Amen. And all of a sudden, before they could get out of the temple, uh, the glory of the Lord showed up in balls and tumors, and the people uh, of Ashdod had started, amen, receiving a famine. And there was a, a famine in the land that God had sent tumors uh, on the people of Ashdod, who were worshiping uh, Dagon. Mm. And the people of Ashdod said, we don't want this box in the temple. Uh, get rid of this Ark of the Covenant. We don't want this covenant in our city. They took the ark out the city and then out the city is when David came and recaptured it and took it into Zion. But God wasn't through yet. God said, no, 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 no. you got to pay for having another God before me. You got to pay for worshiping a half man and a half fish that I did not create. You got to be real careful people out radio land. I'm getting ready to say something. I'm going to get on some people's nerves. But if people back then, amen, can construct a half man and a half fish, it's no different from these days and human beings uh, transforming themselves into other types of genders uh, and sexualities. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, oh, come on here now. There's no difference, amen, uh, in men of that day uh, erecting uh, half men and half fish mm -hmm, uh, statues and, and worshiping them, amen, because the Bible says in Romans uh, that man will get to a place in his life uh, where he will worship the creature more than the creator. He'll get to the place now where he'll worship worship himself more than he'll worship God uh, of his salvation. Help, oh, be quiet. Help me, Jesus. Uh, we need to get to a place right now uh, where we understand in America we are submitting mm -hmm, uh, to some things that are compromising our biblical principles. Uh, we're submitting some things, even in churches, uh, where some churches have decided uh -huh, that it's okay for the same sexes to be married. It's okay uh, for a woman to be married inside of the temple with another woman. Uh, and they're so okay for a of a women priest uh, to, to marry women priests of a men to have relations with men. The devil is a lie from hell. We're going to be held accountable for the things uh, that we compromise our spiritual values with uh, here in America. I know somebody ain't going to like that. I know I'm going to get some letters now. But you know what? I'd rather go ahead and tell the truth uh, than the blood be on my hands. Uh, the truth of the matter is from the beginning, it was Adam and Eve. Uh, from the beginning, God made them male and female alike. Uh, from the beginning, he created them in his own image and in his likeness. Uh, from the beginning, he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And I want to know somebody out there, somebody that has that type of transgender, somebody that has that type of gay mentality. I want you to know that the Lord still loves you and the Lord wants you to be saved and the Lord desires that you not perish. I'm saying this to the liar and the whoremonger and the cheater, not just homosexuals and lesbians. I'm saying this to anybody that's outside of the will of God. It's not just people who transform themselves 
and to other sexual genders, but it's people uh, who have jealousy issues and, uh, and envy spirits and, uh, and hatred and racism in their hearts. Uh, see, we want to look at what we think is the big sins uh, and call them out, but we don't want to call out racism on, on Capitol Hill. We don't want to call out racism in our schools. We don't want to talk about the jealousy and envy in our churches. We don't want to talk about uh, how things are going wrong, amen, the injustice uh, of black men being shot down, amen, by people uh, that are supposed to be protecting us, amen. Uh, I'm talking about those few, those demonic ones uh, that are planted within our law enforcement, that everybody, because I believe in my heart that all of law enforcement, uh, most of it is good, most of it protects us, most of it takes care of us, but you know Satan uh, always has one of his demons uh, in every type of auxiliary, amen. Now you know if you got demons in the church, what you think about law enforcement? Uh, you got to get to the place where there are demonic spirits everywhere, and we have to pray for our law enforcement. We have to pray for our government. We have to pray for our pastors and our churches uh, because we all are wrestling with something. Uh, but when we get to the place where we change the image of what God made, uh, then we have to be held accountable. Mm, help me, Jesus. Uh, but now, getting back to the story, amen, uh, the Ashdod people has gotten, gotten rid of the Ark of the Covenant, uh, but God has now decided to destroy the city, and he's destroyed the city mm, uh, because they have worshipped another God besides the God uh, of my salvation. God said, I'll have no other God before me. Uh, you cannot use your car. You can't worship your car, baby. You can't worship your rims, my brother. You can't even worship your woman more than you worship God. Uh, God is the one that made you woman. You can't worship your man, sister, more than you worship God. God made the man in his image and his likeness. Uh, we got to be real careful what we submit to. We got to be real careful of what we give our heart to because those things uh, can come before the God of our salvation. Now we see uh, here in the scriptures, I'm getting before myself, uh, that now it says here that Ash died. People are, are now all in tumors and balls and sitting and a lot of them are dying now. And now David, oh hallelujah, David did not have to go back uh, because the Philistines had just defeated Israel. Uh, and now God said, this is a battle you don't have to fight, David. I, I fought your battle for you. Uh, you don't have to go back into Ash Dodd and recapture the Ark. Uh, you don't have to go back and fight the battle because I know you just lost 30,000 men. Uh, God's got an anointing that you don't have to fight. Uh, God's got an anointing on your life uh, that he'll make a way and destroy your enemy. So you'll go in uh, and walk in and capture the spoils that God has given you. Uh, and God took that Ark back and gave it to David. Uh, and now David has brought the Ark of the Covenant back inside uh, of Jerusalem where it belongs. He brought it back into the city of David. David. Uh, in chapter 5 of 2 Samuel, the Bible says, uh, now David has walked in, he has a linen, e a linen e ephod on. Uh, he has this linen robe on and, uh, and it's a clasp between the middle with gold and it says uh, that it had no sleeves inside uh, of, the, uh, of, of, of the ephod. It had no sleeves in it. And David had a linen, it was made of linen and linen was the pure uh, fabric of that day. Mm -hmm. uh, and David is dancing, the king is dancing before the Lord. Uh, because he's happy that the presence of the Lord uh, has been recaptured in the city and God is back where he belongs. Uh, I don't know about you out there in Radio Land, but have you ever felt that God left you? <laughs> have things got so dim and dark in your life uh, that you felt like God wasn't nowhere around? Uh, but when he returned, he never left anyhow. Uh, but when you felt like he returned uh, and you got your joy back and you got your peace back uh, and you got your laugh back and you got your praise back, uh, honey, you didn't sit back on the wall uh, and just say, hmm, and pray, thank you, Jesus. Nah, you came in and you started praising God like you lost your mind. When the doctor tells you you don't have cancer, uh, that was just something that was a mistake. Uh, amen. Now, we ain't seen no cancer when the doctor tells you. Uh, you're not sick, you're healed. Uh, that's not a time to sit there. That's time to give God some glory. And that's all David was doing, Nadine. Uh, he was there inside of the temple of Jerusalem, uh, outside in the courtyard, uh, giving God praise. Uh, and the Bible said all the people of Israel Mm -hmm. uh, started dancing before the Lord. Uh, they were dancing and giving God praise. Uh, they were just moving. Amen. They were swaying and they were swinging. Uh, I don't know if they were doing the cha-cha. I don't know if they were doing the bomb. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, all I know the Bible says he danced before the Lord. Uh, he was praising God with all his might. Uh, the Bible says he didn't just praise him with a two-step. Uh, he gave God everything. All of his strength. Uh, he was praising God. God, don't deliver me uh, from churches that don't want to praise God. Uh, Deliver me from churches uh, that come to church and sit back like they're being entertained, uh, like they're in a theater. Mm -hmm. 
no, 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 no. When I come before the presence of the Lord, I, I enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Help me, God. I, and I enter into his courts with praise. I'm thankful unto him, uh, and I'm blessing his name. Uh, and you get to a place in your life uh, when you go into the presence of God. Uh, you want to leave all your problems at home. Uh, you want to leave everything in the, in the parking lot. Uh, when you walk inside the temple, uh, you say, this is the day the Lord made, uh, and we're going to rejoice and be glad. And mm, uh, David danced before the Lord. Uh, he was a participator. The people that came around him were participators. Uh, but the Bible says there was one mm, uh, that looked through the window, one woman named Michelle. Uh, and Michelle was the daughter of Saul. Uh, and she's peeping through the window at David. And the Bible says uh, she watched him dance out of his robe. Uh, and she despised him mm, uh, in her heart. Uh, she got mad because David was praising the Lord. Uh, oh, well, she got mad because, oh, come on here now, because David was giving God glory. Uh, she despised him in her heart uh, because David was lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, she despised him because uh, she gave credit, because he gave credit uh, to Jehovah Jireh, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Uh, let me tell you some saints out there in Radio Land, uh, there is an anointed praise that you have uh, that will make the devil sick. Uh, there's an anointing that you have in your life uh, that will make the devil hate you and despise you. Uh, that's the kind of anointing you want in your life. Uh, you want an anointing that makes the devil upset. Uh, you want the anointing to make people roll their eyes at you when you're praising God. Uh, because you're not praising God for the people. Uh, you're praising God for what he's done in your life. Uh, David is exuberant. Uh, David is happy. Uh, David is praising his God. Uh, and he don't care if Michelle is rolling her eyes at him. Uh, she don't care. If he, he don't care if Michelle is, is despising him and hating him. Uh, David kept on dancing. Uh, and David said, I'm not praising God because of you, Michelle. Uh, I'm praising God because of what God has done. Uh, I'm not praising God because of you. Uh, you're just jealous because God chose me over your daddy. Uh -huh. And your daddy Saul. Uh, and now you're upset because this is not Saul dancing, recapturing the ark. Uh, it's me dancing and I'm giving God praise. Uh, David wasn't praising God for the ark. Uh, he was praising God, amen, uh, because God had brought the ark back into Jerusalem. Uh, amen. He wasn't praising God because of the gold. Uh, he's not praising God because of the manna. Uh, he's praising God because of God's presence. Uh, is brought back into the holy city. And we ought to praise God just for his presence. Uh, we ought to give him glory just because he's there. We ought to give him glory every morning, Radio Land, uh, just because he's been good. Uh, we ought to praise him. Mm -hmm, uh, because, see, David was a participator, but Michelle was a spectator. And sometimes in church you got participators uh, and you got spectators. Uh, some people come to church just to watch you praise God. And some people come to church to praise God. Some people come to church to watch you praise him. Uh, and they're envious because you praise him. Uh, some people come to praise him no matter what other people think. Uh, I'm one of those that says, I don't care what you think, honey. I'm not coming here for you or for them. Uh, I came to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, because when God has healed your body. And when God has brought you out. Uh, and when God has saved your children. Uh, you can't sit there still, honey. Count your blessings. Uh, name them one by one. Uh, count your blessings. Uh, see what the Lord has done. Uh, I don't know about for you, but for me and my house. Uh, I'm going to serve the Lord. Uh, I'm going to praise him on Monday. Give him glory on Tuesday. Praise him on Wednesday. Give him glory on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Do it all over again. Uh, we have to praise the Lord uh, like David did. Uh, David danced before the Lord. I hear your friend Hammond. Uh, he danced before the Lord uh, with all his might. Uh, he praised him with everything he had. Uh, all of his nerve endings. Uh, all of his muscles. Uh, his tendons. His intelligence. His brain. Uh, his feet. His toes. His hips. His arms. His fingers. Uh, he gave everything to God uh, because he recognized God as the one uh, that created him. Mm -hmm. He is the lily of the valley. Uh, he is the bright and morning star. Uh, he is Alpha and Omega. That's why I praise him. Uh, he's the beginning and the end. Uh, he's the first and the last. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because he healed my body. Uh, because he delivered me. Uh, because he took me off of drugs. Uh, because he took me off the clubs. Uh, that's why I praise him because uh, my child is healed. Uh, that's why I praise him because uh, I eat every day. Uh, that's why I praise him. Uh, I lift him up uh, because I have shoes on my feet uh, and clothes on my back. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because I have a radio broadcast. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because I have a wife that loves me. Uh, that's why I praise him. Uh, that's because my children are delivered. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because I live in a land of the free. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because I can worship the God that I worship uh, and not be arrested. Uh, that's why I praise him uh, because I've got favor.
favor. That's why I praise him. Because I'm healthy. That's why I praise him. Because I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why I praise him. I don't praise him because of people. I praise him because of who he is. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everything. I praise him because he's the air that I breathe. He's the ground that I walk on. He's the green in the grass. He's the leaf on the tree. He's the moon in the sky. He's the stars in the galaxy. That's why I praise him. Because he's been good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. David danced before the Lord with all his might. Are you a spectator or are you a participator? Are you going to church to look and signify? Are you going to church to lift up the name of Jesus? Uh, forget about what they're saying about you. Forget about what they talked about you about. They talked about Jesus. Honey, when you get to church, uh, you go in there with your mind made up saying, God, uh, I'm going to praise you because you're good. I'm going to praise you because you spared my life. I'm going to praise you because I'm not on drugs. I'm going to praise you because I don't have cancer. And even if I do cancer, if I even have to do have cancer, there is a bomb in Gilead. Oh, that is able to save the sin sick soul. Even if I am sick, call the elders of the church. Let them anoint me with oil and pray the prayer of faith and the saved shall be saved. The sick shall be saved. In Jesus name, this is Bishop O.T. McCray. Amen. From Morris Chapel Baptist Church, 530 Baptist Avenue in the city of Greenwood, South Carolina. Pray for us here at the Ship This Place broadcast. Be a blessing to us this week for our anniversary Tuesday and Wednesday night. Come see us Sunday morning. God bless you. Keep your hands on the plow. Keep your eyes on the prize. You can't curse what God has blessed. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. God bless you. <laughs> if I were a drunk